Hello and welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Welcome back for another episode. Hello guys, hello Alan. You alright, Boring Calgary? Everything's boring today, mate. Everything, a live video. I will dig it. Thanks, Johnny. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do a lot more live videos at the moment, Johnny, and hopefully eventually repost it as just a standard video. Um, we are up to 1,604 subscribers, so thank you everyone for supporting the channel. Um, let's get cracking, let's crack. I've got a belting episode for you today. Uh, this is a project I'm really passionate about. It's been in the news recently. Someone else uh, sort of led me onto it and I had a look at it and I thought, you know what? This is right up the Boeing Company street. We could really get on this. We could really save a lot of money and we could really... Um, you know, drive this business by landing this project. So uh, yeah, let's let's get going with that. Okay, guys. Yeah. So, um, well, it is Johnny. Um, I'll explain in the video. But these islands are, are part of the UK, but they are. Uh, quite segregated from the UK, so it would definitely benefit from having uh, a tunnel connection to all these islands. It definitely opens up possibilities. So, mega project. Jersey, Sark and Guernsey to France tunnel project. So, without going into a huge history lesson, um, Jersey and Sark and Guernsey were part of France. Uh, there was a lot of conflict between France and uh, England, uh, like 900 BC. And what eventually happened was we took over those islands and they be became part of what eventually became the United Kingdom. Because obviously the Kingdom of England became the King the United Kingdom. Um, this is being proposed. It's a grand project. It's being considered to link the islands of Jersey, Sark and Guernsey to France either via a tunnel or a bridge. Obviously a bridge is going to be extremely, extremely costly. Probably, you know, quadruple the price that I'm going to propose today. So definitely worth building a tunnel. There's also a proposal for um, an island with an airport. Now I've not included that in this proposal here today. If they wanted to use spoil from the Boeing Company tunnels and, and use that to create an island, you know, they can do that on off their own back. But uh, the project code name is Connect 3 Million. Why it's Connect 3 Million, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe there's 3 million people in that region, in that part of uh, Western France that could possibly connect in with Guernsey and Jersey and Sark there. What I'm now going to refer to as the Channel Islands. Um, the Channel Islands are about 100 miles south of England. Uh, this is exactly the sort of project the Boeing Co. should be tendering for, and I can't stress that enough. This is a great project. It's a good size. It's not a huge, huge project. It's just the right size. It can be broken down into various elements. Therefore, you know, they don't need to build this whole thing in one go. They could do it over the course of five or six years, or they could maybe just, you know, blow it out and do it in two years if they really wanted to. Um, it's... It involves a lot of tunnels, it involves moving people around, possibly moving freight and packages around as well, which the Boeing Company could adapt and do so with some modifications to its, its vehicles. And I'm pretty confident that Tesla could build something that would be fit for purpose for that. Uh, so it has been in the news that businessmen Martin Dory and Kevin Keane are active in securing funding. These are not just two you know, sole traders who are selling toys in Jersey or potatoes or whatever else they sell in Jersey. These are people that are heavily involved in the financial system, the world financial system. They have connections all over uh, the USA, Asia, Europe, uh, South America. These are connected people. Uh, they live a very uh, comfortable lifestyle on Jersey. They want to improve. They are Jersey men, as we like to call them. They want to improve the island, make it a better place to live. So it will be relatively easy to secure funding. So, this is definitely not a pipe dream either, guys. This is not just me throwing something, you know, throwing an idea at a wall, seeing what sticks. This potentially could happen. If we could get enough publicity from this video, maybe uh, we could get, 
you know, some people are emailing the Boeing company about potentially putting a tender for this project. I think that is the way to go. These two people here, Martin Dury and Kevin Keane, can make this happen. And we're talking multi-billion pound projects if necessary. I don't think it does. It needs to cost that much. If they want to build an airport as well, you know, maybe it's going to cost multi-billion uh, pounds, but we'll have to see. Certainly the tunnel aspect is not going to cost that much. Here is the map of the local area to the north. We have England. This is southern England. Um, to the south here, we have the Channel Islands. We have Guernsey, Jersey. And just to the east of Guernsey is the island of Sark. The island of Sark, there's only 400. In fact, I know exactly how many people live on Sark because there's a register of how many people live there. 468 people live on Sark as of this year. As you can see, they're, they're very isolated. from. They're much closer to France than England. Everyone on the island speaks English, but um, they're an important part of the UK economy because they are a financial services powerhouse. Uh, the Channel Islands, just a quick lowdown on the facts. Jersey, Sark and Guernsey are part of the United Kingdom, also known as the Channel Islands. The, the three islands have a combined population of only 172,000 people. Thousands of people want to live on the islands, but they find it very, very difficult because of the uh, the rules and regulations in terms of home ownership, which restricts the number of people that can move there. You actually have to live there for 10 years before you can buy a house. So it, it's very restrictive. Um, the islands cover an area of 189 square kilometers, which is a decent enough area. As you can see, Sark is very small. It's only 5.5 kilometers squared. Um, the islands specialize in financial services and thus have a high economic output per capita. And Jersey specializes in tax management and advice. Now read into that what you will. I've added some videos into the, the description of this video if you want to learn more about how Jersey does tax management. I'm sure you can imagine what that involves. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's how the islands have become so wealthy despite being so isolated from the UK and France. Uh, Guernsey and Jersey uh, joined the United Kingdom of England in 1204, so they've been with us for over 800 years now, which is great. Why build a tunnel to France? Obviously, France is one of the largest economies in Europe. But we're talking more about the islands themselves, how they would benefit. So it would significantly reduce passenger and freight transportation times. Currently, it takes a lot of time to move things to Guernsey and Jersey. Um, they've got a small port. It can't really handle that much um, freight. Um, most people go either via a ferry or they fly in. A lot of the year, there is adverse... Well, uh, there's a good few weeks of the year where the weather is so adverse that there's not even a slight possibility that you can get to Guernsey. Sometimes you have to wait for things to calm down. So there's, there's lots of delays and, and issues and conflicts trying to get into the island. This would re reduce that to next to zero. The islands are somewhat isolated from the UK and France does suffer economically due to this. Very, very isolated. Um, it's difficult to do things on the island. You, you know, that there's, there's very few... Um, uh, critical services, you know, things like hospitals and, and um, you know, if you want something doing, you know, there might only be two or three people on the island that can actually do it and you can't exactly fly people in. Thus, it's quite uh, economically stifling to live there sometimes. It would allow Jersey and Guernsey to import goods 24-7 during times of adverse weather and that happens quite a lot. Five to six weeks of the year, there is very adverse weather conditions. Uh, it would reduce the unit cost of most goods on the island and create many new jobs. There, there are big shortages of certain goods on the island. Uh, sometimes you have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks to bring goods in and thus that creates um, supply problems and uh, it raises the prices of all goods on the island. For its size, the island is a financial powerhouse so can easily borrow the necessary funds to make this happen. Absolutely can. And we are talking billions and billions of pounds move through the islands every month uh, from companies all over the world. It is a real powerhouse. There are 
a group of people that live on on Jersey that have immense control and power in the world. So it, you know, it's not to be uh, sniffed at what the people on this island can do. Due to strict house ownership rules, it's very difficult to live or work in Jersey and Guernsey. They actually restrict you from what properties you can rent and what properties you can buy for the first 10 years that you're based on the island. Thus, it's very difficult to get people to work there. Um, they really struggle. There's, there's a lot of um, labor shortages in, in Guernsey and Jersey. Uh, and, and thus, you know, again, that drives up prices, which is not great. And hopefully, with this tunnel, we could, uh, allay a lot of those things and, and make it a better quality of life for everyone. It would significantly reduce the amount of greenhouse gases emitted compared to air travel uh, and uh, travel via um, boats as well. They, they're powered by heavy crude oil. Um, opens up 1,000 acres of land on the island of Sark for redevelopment. Currently, there's only 468 people living on the island of Sark. The vast majority of it is empty land. Now, by linking it into Guernsey and into Jersey and then into France, that land suddenly becomes very, very, very valuable and potentially we could open up that land for residential developments uh, if, you know, the local people want that, which I'd hope they would because there's potentially some big money to be made there by turning that into some kind of, um, you know, beautiful residential island, excellent schools, excellent facilities, etc, etc. So, the plan. This is what I'm proposing you know, I might look at this again. It could potentially change. But this all makes sense to me. This is what, you know, the Boeing Company has been proposing for other projects. Um, I've tried to do things more efficiently, uh, as efficiently as possible. I've also got some ideas for how this can be reduced further. Um, but that may detrimentally affect the, um, the speed and effectiveness of the actual tunnel system. But I'll explain that to you as I go through. This is a mammoth project and thus necessitates multiple site teams on various islands and will require eight tunnel boring machines manned by eight teams and run concurrently. So what I've proposed is that all the, the, the tunnels are bored at the same, same time. Uh, we, use, we, we use as many teams as possible. Thus, we can do a lot of the, uh, uh, the items on the actual program concurrently and thus reduce the overall length of the actual uh, build of this project. Um, so we, we actually start in Fort George. The more I think of that, we're probably better uh, starting slightly west of Fort George. That'll give us a bit more of a run-up for, for getting underneath the sea. Um, we've got a TBM launch pit, 30 foot diameter and 90 foot deep. That gives us a good... And we'd obviously want to angle the TBM so that we can get a good... Uh, good launch into the uh, strata there and um, Rady called Raid I think it's Raid in Sark uh, again we're going to go for a TBM entry shaft so the TBMs will go from Fort George and they will pop out at Raid in Sark I've had to go for um, two uh, shafts on Sark because we need to uh, pull the TBMs round and, and rather than going westbound we need them to be going uh, southbound so the best way to do that is have two, B, two TBM shafts and then link them up with a, a very short tunnel of, of, of approximately 300 meters. But they'll need to be very deep because the uh, the island is, is quite small. Uh, we need to go back under the sea. We don't have much of a run up. So you know, ultimately, the only way to do this is have a 200 foot deep uh, shaft so we can get underneath the sea into the bedrock of our choice. Uh, one thing was worth noting is that before the shafts are completed we need to build uh, ramps and the ramps are very important because in the future they are where vehicles will enter and exit the system but they will also be where the uh, the muck trains or the spoil trains exit the uh, uh, the tunnels and then obviously the spoil can be unloaded at the surface and then taken to where it's needed either converted into bricks or converted into an island for the airport. Um, pretty much the same, really. We're going all the way to France. There's a lot of shafts along the way. There's going to be a lot of um, site teams and section engineers working on this particular project because we, we want to reduce the overall timeline if we are going to get it done quickly. Um, in terms of the actual tunnels themselves, they'll be exactly the same as the one that was built 
uh, in Hawthorne. I, I'm not proposing uh, increasing the diameter for this particular project, maybe in a future project. But I believe we can still move freight using existing tunnel sizes. So 14 foot uh, external diameter, and I believe it's a 12 foot four inch internal diameter. Uh, here's a map of the islands in relation to France. As you can see, they're not a million miles apart. Um, we're going across from Guernsey into a Sark here, and then through Sark down to Jersey, uh, and then we, we've got a tunnel that goes across Jersey to the uh, the southeast of the island, and then we're going straight across in almost like a perfect straight line. As you can see, um, we're going to be starting fairly inland. We need that run up. Then at Sark, we've got two um, two shafts, uh, an entry shaft um, and a launch pit, or a launch shaft. Uh, there's Sark there. It goes across. These are linking up the islands. The, the most important tunnel is obviously this latter tunnel, which then links up Jersey to France, and thus we have a connection to all the facilities in France. Um, yeah, the plan is to link it up here because it is it does not too much in that particular area and then we have access to uh, the local road network and there is an airport um, further south of this position and a railway station so distances uh, so Fort George Guernsey to uh, La Forge uh, Sark is uh, 7.84 miles uh, La Forge Sark to Leoville uh, in Jersey is 14.98 miles uh, Leoville, Jersey to Forvik in Jersey is 8.86 miles. Forvik, Jersey to uh, Prin uh, Printania Plague in France is 34.93 miles. So the, the majority of the tunneling is going from Jersey to France. That is where we're going to spend the majority of our time. Obviously, that tunnel needs to start first. We need to get that going um, prior to any kind of uh, major work on the other tunnels. Um, it probably work uh, from France, uh, from sorry, from Jersey to France, and then complete the rest of the network uh, concurrently once that had been uh, has been started. Um, the total length of all those tunnels is sixty six point six miles. One possible way we could save money on this project is by um, scrapping the tunnel that goes across the island of Jersey, so the eight point eight six miles. However. Uh, then you'd end up with loads of pods and loads of freight pods on the island using the exi existing roads. Um, I've had a look at the existing roads on Google Maps. They are not good. Even the A roads are typically around 20 foot wide at best. There's quite often there are no pavements, no sidewalks, um, lots of traffic. It, it, it's not really a start of that, but it could be considered as a stopgap solution is leaving that tunnel right until the end. Yeah, so this is how it's gonna look on the map once it's completed. 66.6 .6 miles. Um, pods will be able to use the system at uh, 155 miles per hour. And uh, freight pods will be able to use the system at up to 100 miles per hour. Uh, I'd imagine that the freight pods would use the system um, in the evenings, so from 9 p.m. until uh, 5 a.m., they would have uh, you know free reign over the system. They would be prioritised, but during the day, uh, the passenger pods would be the main um, transport that would be uh, be used. So, ramps. Ramps are absolutely critical to this job, and I had a good think about ramps because. We need to use them for removing um, spoil from the, uh, the the excavation, from the tunnels. Um, and we also need to then repurpose those ramps so that we can have pods and uh, freight pods entering and exiting the system at regular intervals. So we're going to need quite a lot of ramps. Uh, we got each uh, shaft um, or tunnel on each island is, is going to need... Uh, uh, an ingress and an egress uh, ramp 
So on Guernsey, we have two access ramps, 12 foot wide, a one in five gradient. Now I was thinking about doing that uh, even steeper, but I think that that's probably about right for what we need. Um, we, what what ideally we want is is we do we want the vehicles to be able to um, maintain a steady speed while they are exiting the tunnel as well. We don't want the, the speed to suddenly um, slacken off too quickly, as that would create potential uh, traffic uh, issues. Uh, but I, I think one in five is is about right for for that. Um, on Sark, because the uh, the the shafts are so deep, the shafts are going to be close to two hundred foot deep, maybe even deeper if necessary. Um, we can't use traditional excavation to do that. We we, we can't use um, sheet piles or CFA uh, continuous flight auger uh, system to to uh, construct those uh, ramps. We're going to have to actually construct a, a tunnel. The tunnel will be relatively short, so the best method of building it would be through pipe jacking which is again another set of machines that we need to bring to a remote island which again adds to the cost but if we could do a one in four gradient for those tunnels um possibly uh, phasing in that gradient from maybe a one in seven up to a one in four for the the final sort of three quarters of that ramp that would be perfectly adequate for, for this uh, so we need four tunnels on sark um uh, four access ramps Jersey four axis vents again at, the, at uh, Forvik and in France two axis ramps 12 foot wide one in five gradient traditional excavation project cost now this is the interesting bit I've put a cost in here for eight TBMs now it's not necessarily going to work like this it might be more cost effective to bring some existing TBMs from the USA and bring them to uh, to Guernsey or Sark, wherever they needed. However, um, I, I have no experience of, of moving things thousands of miles, uh, especially large uh, tunnel boring machines. So I, I, I don't entirely know how much that is gonna cost. So what I've done is I've put in an estimate for building new TBMs in England and then moving them on to uh, the islands. Um, they could be sold on later on, so this money could be uh, recuperated, but we'd have to we'd have to see. Otherwise, um, the TBMs could potentially be brought back to the USA, or maybe there's other projects in Europe they could be used on, like the uh, CERN uh, Collider. So 18 million pounds each, which is about 23, 24 million dollars. Uh, site setup. Remember guys, we're working on an island here. Um, we're gonna have to bring labor to the island, so we're gonna have to sort, sort out accommodation. Uh, we're gonna have to build big compounds. Uh, we're gonna have to build a port potentially at Sark because there's no other way to bring materials in. There's gonna be a lot of logistical costs there. We're gonna have to build roads. Um, there's gonna be a lot of site preparation work. Um, also, there's gonna be need to be um, some uh, we're gonna to to examine the geology of the area we're gonna to have to sink some uh, trial pits we're gonna to have to sink some some boreholes actually in the sea itself so it's gonna be a lot of site setup and logistics costs i've got 55 million there uh, tunnel construction i've gone for 9.9 .9 million per mile um i think that's about right it might increase just because of the the, the position of where, where we're building essentially but for now i think 9.9 .9 is is around about right i mean hopefully you get that there's this profit in it for them there um i've got 660 million pounds uh ramp construction we, we, there's a lot of ramps we've obviously got some pipe jacking as well to construct those ramps most of it is traditional so the costs are relatively affordable but we're talking around 47 million pounds just for ramps uh, launch pit construction uh, we have a firm price for that from the las vegas project um but ha the main thing is that on the island of Sark, we have uh, a set of shafts that are going to be very deep, close to 200 foot, maybe slightly more, maybe 250 foot deep if necessary. So I, I put in 3.7 million per shaft there, uh, which kind of evens out between the uh, the different sizes of shafts. So 22.2 million. Um, got passenger pods. I put in a final cost uh, of 66,000 pounds. 
Um, so that's 500 pods, 33 million. 200 freight pods. Now, there's potential here for a freight pod, which will, they will not be moving containers, guys. It, it's just not going to fit in the tunnel. The only way I can conceivably see that they do it is they either repackage it into smaller um, containers, which I think is just very difficult, or they could uh, put it onto pallets and then have some kind of skateboard type platform um, with a front um, with front area to, to protect it from the wind and then just run it through on pallets, which makes makes sense and it would be relatively secure on that kind of system. Um, it should fit in the tunnel. Inland freight, con freight port construction. Obviously once these freight pods uh, get in land, get it to into uh, Jersey or, or Sark or wherever they choose to do it. Um, I'm gonna need an area where all the uh, the freight is stored uh, and then maybe repackaged and then redistributed across the islands. Uh, I put 10 million in there for that, but I think that's probably quite excessive. Um, you'll need supercharger stations. Obviously, these pods and uh, are gonna need uh, recharging fairly regularly, maybe two to three times a day. So we'll need um, a charger station on um, Guernsey, on Jersey, and possibly in France as well. So I've put a cost of 12.6 million. So that's uh, four, four, 4.2 million each. There will be some necess necessary roads to be built, especially in Sark, uh, linking the existing roads, which are miles away from the proposed site. So we're gonna need to build some roads as well. Uh, I've got 2.8 miles of potential roads. There'll be some roads as well in um, in Guernsey to link up the actual um, uh, uh, tunnels where they link up with the, with the ramps. So that'll be around nine million pounds. Uh, brick factory. Hopefully we can convert a lot of the spoil into bricks and then resell it. That will significantly reduce the project costs. If you can sell them for 10 pence per brick, 10 p which is around uh, 15 cents. Uh, so I've put in 5.5 .5 million for a purpose-built brick factory. Um, it probably need to go on Sark. I'd imagine that'd be the easiest place to put it, but we'll have to see. Maybe on Jersey or maybe either Jersey or Sark where it'll go. Uh, the total cost of all these things is 1.015 billion pounds. Converting that into dollars is $1.238 billion, which in the grand scheme of things is not a huge amount of money when you think that they're potentially talking about spending close to three or four billion pounds building this airport island and all these bridges. So you know, we've really, really undercut the potential competition here. Uh, let's see what people are saying in the comments section. So you all had to look at my face all this time. <laughs> no worries, Johnny. Uh, maybe someone will design a new shipping container for the tunnels, like there are containers for airlines. Yeah, you know what? You know what, Boeing Calgary? I was thinking about that a couple of days ago because they are a lot shorter, aren't they? Um, one option that I was thinking about is, is why could you not build a shipping container um, that was, let's say, let's say it was, uh, let's say 15%, no, let's say, it's 20% smaller than your typical shipping container. And then actually put that shipping container into an existing shipping container and have some kind of mechanism where there was a, a, a kind of um, uh, a moving floor where you could pull it out and then load that onto a pod. That's a potential. I mean, would it make a big difference if we started manufacturing shipping containers that were 14 inches shorter and eight inches narrower than current shipping containers. Would that cause major issues? I, I don't know enough about it really to, to say, but there's definitely a solution in there. Otherwise, just put it on pallets and then we'll just load it like that because it, it, it's not necessarily gonna be a big problem. Um, project program. So in terms of the actual tunneling aspect, um, a lot of the jobs can be constructed concurrently so, so you have uh, uh, particular jobs on your program that are overlapping each other. But in terms of like the main um, job is is building the tunnel from Forvic, Jersey to Britannia Plague in France. That's 468 days. I've assumed 
that they can do 120 meters of tunnel per day. I think that is probably realistic. Uh, there might be days where they do a lot more than that, but there might be other days where it's you know around the 30, 40 meter mark. So I think 468 days is about right. Um, if they could do all the other, other, so for example, they could do the first two tunnels uh, fairly quickly, and they could already have a system up and running before they've even got halfway to France, which means that people can be you know testing the system and getting it up to scratch. Um, ramps using the traditional excavation method uh, to, to, to construct it, to excavate it, to remove the material. I've got 10 to 12 weeks. I think that is is way more. I, th I think it probably near eight weeks really, but just to be safe, I'm saying 10 to 12 weeks. Again, they need to be done prior to the TBM being dropped into the shaft. So that's going to add on to your 468 days. Um, you need the ramps to remove the spoil from the TBMs, uh, from the, the muck trains. So you need those built as quickly as possible. The first ramp that you build in Guernsey needs to be done extra quickly. So if you could get that down to six or seven weeks, that would be perfect. Uh, tunnel ramp pipe jacking is be relatively quick because it's a mechanized process and hopefully be able to bring some people in who've got a good experience of using that, those kinds of machines, seven to eight weeks, uh, launch pits, um, if the launch pit's 60 foot deep, it'll probably only take seven weeks, probably less. If it's 200 foot deep and it's difficult conditions, maybe 14 weeks is the absolute most, but I, I very, very much doubt it's gonna take 14 weeks, probably nearer six or seven weeks. Um, right, so my thoughts. My thoughts, after all that, what are you guys thinking? Do you think this is a good idea? This is a serious, serious project. This is not some kind of pipe dream. This is actually being proposed uh, people are very serious about it. People on the island, as you can tell, I'm quite passionate about this. People on the island want this to happen. They want either a tunnel or they want a series of bridges because they're sick of this kind of isolationist kind of existence where, you know, they're not connected to France. They're not connected to England. The islands are kind of disjointed. Um, and they, need, they need better connections. Uh, and, and this could potentially... Um, massively increased the GDP of these islands. You know, potentially over the next 40 years, they could triple their GDP. It'll definitely double it. But we'll have to, you know, we'll have to see if it ever gets built. The, the great people of Jersey, Sark and Guernsey need this. They absolutely do. Lovely people, lovely people. Lovely. One of the most beautiful islands in Europe, I would say. My personal opinion. A fact, the beaches are just wonderful. Like nothing you've ever seen. Um... I mean, it's in, they're not like the beaches in Hawaii, but in their own kind of, you know, English European way, they are very beautiful. It will easily double the Channel Islands' current seven billion GDP. I'm thinking that potentially in 40 years they could get up to um, 21 billion GDP. Uh, the Boeing Company should tender for the for the job and put the other bidders to shame. We know there's going to be loads of contractors bidding on this job, putting in stupid, stupid bids. You know, three and a half billion, four and a half billion, six billion, uh, and then when they actually finish it, it ends up costing eight billion. So, if the Boeing company can get on, put in a tender, guarantee a fixed cost price. Say this is a fixed cost. We're going to work to this, and and whatever we go over, we pay for it. That'll absolutely guarantee them the job. Um, the one billion construction cost could be repaid in under ten years. If they have some kind of toll system where they let um, they let cars into the tunnels, uh, only electric cars, obviously. There's not many electric cars on the island, but I can imagine that it could be boosted if um, you know you, you could use your Tesla in there and get up to 150 miles an hour, uh, 155 miles an hour. So potentially, uh, and all the pods as well, passengers will be paying a fur. Uh, potentially you could be repaying off the loan around 100 to 115 million pounds per year over 10 years that will be paid alone and then whatever else is uh, pure profit living in france and working in jersey will offer an exciting opportunity it's very difficult at the moment because there's a very small supply of homes everyone's packed in really densely together 
and, and getting around the island is, is not ideal either, either because of all the traffic so living in France and then commuting into Jersey would be really good for a lot of people and they'd be able to afford um, a bigger house in France and uh, they'd also be able to work in the home of Jersey. Here is Jersey itself as you can see it is the most beautiful beautiful place a lovely island uh, the people are so friendly and um, it's got a lot going for it really and, and the, the climate is beautiful as well um, it's got a climate more like um, central uh, or coastal France than the United in, in England so uh, it, it's it, it, there's plenty of good job op opportunities for people there and the weather's good um, and it's you know, it's, it's a, a democratic society as well so it's, it's an ideal place to work and live right right well thank you guys for watching it will be interesting to see for just in time just in time shipping i love that they will uh sometimes unpack let's read this in here oh no it's not frozen has it so let me hold on for this guys because sometimes it does uh oh there it is right there that's good that's okay so uh for just in time shipping they will sometimes unpack shipping containers to put the content into airlines this is to accelerate items that are delayed or need asap for assembly lines yeah there's got to be some kind of way um boring calgary that we can uh take the stuff out of the container and then very quickly um put it onto uh some kind of uh, special specially purpose vehicle so the actual uh, container itself could have another container in it uh, and then it's quickly very quickly pulled out on the shelf almost and then dropped dropped onto the uh, the skateboard and then it, that is just whisked away uh, and that could all be automated you wouldn't need people doing that it could just all be machines um, Johnny B it sounds like a great project I think a lot of people are, are going to be skeptical until the technology has a more of a track record though yeah very fair point Johnny uh, we, we've got to get these jobs done in uh, Las Vegas, in Chicago, the dugout loop in LA. We've got to get these jobs under our belt um, before we can start really turning to really big projects, especially those that are, are thousands of miles away from the USA. But there's a lot of potential here. Um, if this money is ready available and they've already secured it, then I think that Elon Musk should definitely uh, bid for this project. Um, but definitely, 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 we, we need to, to get involved with this project. It's a really big opportunity. So if you've not already done so, guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. I've seen you all here before, so I'm assuming that you already have subscribed. If you're watching for the first time now, definitely hit that bell icon so you can be updated whenever I go live. Also, in the um, comments below, I've got my Discord, Twitter, and Instagram channels. Uh, tell me what you think about this proposal. Uh, also wanted to thank my patrons i have a new patron uh, jim knapp uh, thank you jim appreciate you uh making the donation uh really if you guys want to support the channel help this channel grow um help me hopefully go to the usa uh, next year uh please you know consider subscribing to my patreon um you know a couple of dollars uh, per month is more than enough and that will help me really grow the channel thanks so much guys uh, you're really helping me because I've got this Ecamm uh, live um, yearly subscription now so we've pretty much already paid that off with the Patreon subscriptions so that's beautiful I can maybe think about getting some other stuff um, and hopefully I'll inform you guys when I buy it uh, thank you for watching really appreciate it guys really really appreciate it and like I said before this channel is growing quite quickly and uh, we're stuck at 1500 subscribers for quite a long time but over the last uh, three weeks it suddenly shot shot up to 1600 so um, that's great to see really really great to see guys um, yeah so before I leave you lovely people um, yeah thanks Johnny appreciate that appreciate it mate um, tell me what you think about this project do you, do you think that it's going to be cost effective do you think it's going to pay itself back um, do you think I've done it the right way? Would you have done it differently? Um, let me know because it'd be interesting to to debate this. But 
I I just think with the money, the money is right there in front of our faces. They've gone to the local newspapers, they've gone to the national press and they said, look, we, they've even gone to ITV News and they said, look, we want to connect all the islands together and then connect Jersey to France. So we're serious about doing this. Please, you know, give us an idea about how we can do it. And this, this, this video, hopefully, will make it through to those people uh, and it will put an idea, maybe put a seed, seed in the head and they'll be like, you know what, this Elon Musk guy, he seems like he can build tunnels quickly. They'll be like, whoa, how much cheaper is this than the bridge? Let's get this guy involved. And at that point, then, you know, we've got, we can massively market that. It will really um, bring a lot of exposure to the Boeing company. And uh, then from, you know, if we can successfully complete that job, that could lead to 10 other jobs. So all in all, it will be great. Let's see if I missed any questions. Oh. What up, fam? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Davies? Right, guys, I don't think we've got any questions, so I'm going to call it a day. So, uh, again, bye. Goodbye.